In today's video, I'm going to be tackling this vintage Malcolm dresser. This piece is in pretty rough shape. It's mahogany veneer on most of it with some solid mahogany and other parts that aren't mahogany at all. There's some pretty significant finish damage in multiple areas, tons of scratches, chipped veneer. So I'm going to be doing what I can to repair those issues and bring this piece back to life. And we're also going to talk about some safety when using lacquer. Stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. As you can see, I definitely have my work cut out for me here. But before I can get into some of these more significant areas of damage, I need to disassemble everything. And the reason the top was off there, I don't normally have to take it off. I actually had to take it off to get it in my Jeep. It was like half an inch too wide, so taking the top off helped. Despite some of the finish issues and, you know, obvious scratch damage, this piece is actually really well built and well made. And these are the original casters. They're still in good shape, but they're a little bit rusty as well as some of the screws here. So I'm just dropping them into a bath of Evapo Rust, which is a really safe and non-toxic way to remove rust from things. I'll let those sit for just a couple of hours while I work on other things. Okay, so the veneer on the drawers is not in great shape. This one drawer wasn't too bad, but the rest all have a lot of cracks and it's just quite brittle. So normally scraping would not be my first choice on a piece with this much integral damage. The reason I'm choosing to do it here is because I've done it enough that I can just feel how things are going. Like I can tell if it's gonna catch or I can tell if I'm gonna rip the veneer off. It's really a feel thing and the more you do this, the more you'll understand what I mean. Um, I didn't wanna put a stripper on this because of how many cracks there were. I didn't wanna introduce more moisture underneath that veneer. I didn't want any more veneer to come loose than was already loose, so I'm just very, very carefully scraping here. So I'm starting the first of the veneer repairs. Um, you can see there's a few big chips taken out. The big ones I'm going to try to patch with real wood veneer. The smaller ones you'll see in a bit I'll just use a wood filler for. But before I can add new veneer in where the chips are, I need to make sure that everything is adhered properly. And you can see there's a lot of ripples, sort of areas where it's lifted. So that's what I'm gonna deal with first. Now this long sliver was actually my fault. Um, it was, I didn't realize, but it had already started to lift and when I pulled it out of the Jeep, it caught on the blanket and tore a strip off. There must have already been a small chip there because you can see the piece in the middle there. I couldn't find that piece, so that's one area that I'll be using some wood filler in. So flipping over to the other side here, this is a piece of trim that I had to remove as well as the top so that this would fit in my Jeep. I have a very obviously specific width and this was just slightly larger so popping the top off as well as one of the trim pieces did the trick. But now I have to put it back on so I'm just gluing it with hide glue which is how it was attached in the first place. And just for a little extra security, <laughs> for lack of a better term, I popped a couple of pins in there.
So at this point, I have everything scraped except for the legs. The legs, I'm actually gonna be using some stripper on. But going back for a second to the casters, these have been sitting while I've been scraping and it's time to come out of the solution. So just giving them a quick rinse and a wipe and these are good to go, no more rust. Vinegar also works really well for removing rust. Um, I choose to use Evapor Rust because it's reusable. So you can see there's a tub there on the right that is going to be put back on the shelf and used again. For the small sections, as well as some of the areas where the veneer has separated, I'm going to be using some wood filler. Now, the one on the left here is actually mahogany, but you can see the color is just not right at all. Genuine mahogany varies in color, but most often I see it this sort of brown color. It's kind of the finish that gives it that super red tone. So I'm going to be using some cherry wood filler instead, which is going to give me a closer match. My best advice when using wood filler and trying to get a match is go a little bit lighter than you think you need. You can always darken it up by adding stains and pigments, but if you use a wood filler that's too dark, there's nothing you can really do about it. Now I know for sure that I don't have any crotch mahogany veneer in here, but I have to find something that's at least close that I can sort of work with. When you have areas that need to be patched that are kind of irregular in shape like this, sometimes it's easier to simplify it. So that's all I'm doing here. And this is what I ended up having to do as far as the shape goes. And what makes this particular patch complicated is the way that the grain sort of bends around um, on each side. So I found a piece of wood. Um, it's not mahogany. It's a similar looking grain, but once I glue that in, I'll definitely have to do some touch up work with colors like pigments to blend that in better. So I'm finally getting around to stripping the legs now. I'm not going to be sanding them though. All I'm doing is removing the old finish, which is super gummy. You can see here it's going to take me three or four rounds with the stripper and some steel wool to get that old gummy finish off. But the color that's underneath is exactly the color that I'm going for. So stripping the old finish off and I'll be applying a new finish after. Now, if you've been on my channel before, you know that I love Odie's oil, but you've never seen me use this product yet. This is the Odie Super Penetrating Oil. I haven't used it yet because it's for a very specific purpose, and I'm kind of testing it here a bit, if you will, on these drawer faces. Now, I mentioned that the veneer here is very brittle. It's kind of cracked. What this particular product is normally used for is enhancing the clarity in the wood. So if you've got areas that are light and dark, it helps keep that contrast. And the other main use for it is to stabilize. So if you're building a piece of furniture, this is something that you would use as a base layer. It, it penetrates more deeply into the wood than the other Odie's products and helps stabilize it. Now, this is just veneer, so it's obviously very thin, but I figured it couldn't hurt to try it out. I'm told this is not the most beginner friendly Odie's product. So if you're interested in learning more about it, I would suggest going on their website and learning more about it. I would have preferred to use only Odie's oil products on this piece, but due to the nature of some of the damage and the patching that I had to do, I need to use a film forming finish, so I'll be using lacquer over everything. So there's some areas of the trim here on the bottom that I'm trying to get to match these legs. The legs, like I said, I just removed the finish, but I didn't take any of the old color off. So what I need to do is try to match it. So I'm using some Saman water-based stain here. This color is called Walnut, and it's very close. Um, and you'll see here on this trim piece, the right hand, maybe sixth, is actually solid mahogany and then the left part, which is a lot lighter, is some other type of wood. But I'm going to do a couple of coats on that left section, which should bring it closer to this mahogany section in the front here. I'm super happy with this piece because normally I have to completely refinish the inside of drawers. These drawers aren't in terrible shape at all. They need to be cleaned, but that's pretty typical because most people don't clean their drawers. It's just the way it is. 
Now the top drawer did have a little bit of damage. There were some stains on the bottom and I could have painstakingly, mind you, um, removed the glue blocks from underneath the bottom of the drawer and slid this out and sanded it down. But there's no guarantee that I would be able to get those stains out anyway. So what I'm gonna do is clean it really well and I'm actually gonna be putting a felt liner in the top drawer. I just got back from Workbench Conference, which is basically a conference in Atlanta for YouTubers who do woodworking. I got to hang out with uh, Emily from Reconstructing Emily. If you haven't seen her channel, you're missing out, definitely go give her a follow. But I'm back in the workroom today and things are looking a little bit different. Just before I left for the conference, I made a few pretty big purchases. Usually about once a year, I try to upgrade my some form of my equipment. And what I ended up buying this time was a dust collector, like a big one for my bigger machinery like table saws and planer. The bottom one there is a band saw, so that's going to come in handy for some stuff that I want to start doing and implementing. Good changes and additions to my workroom. Oh, this guy. So this is meant to work in conjunction <laughs> with this dust collector. This is a air filtration system. So basically, like when I'm spraying things like lacquer, I don't want that stuff lingering in the air. And even though this isn't going to get the super tiny, tiny particles, it is going to pull out a lot of it. And same with when I'm sanding. Now I want you to keep this in mind because we're going to talk about it a little bit later. But first, it is time to put some sealer on these. Now I used the Odie's oil before I left for the conference. So this has been sitting almost a week. And what I'm doing here is adding some mohawk vinyl sealer. This is just going to seal everything up before I start doing any color work or lacquer. Now I've touched briefly on the toxicity of lacquer before. I sprayed two drawers there and already the pollution level in the room has gone up to poor. Uh, you can see I have my respirator on there and by the time I had finished spraying the cabinet we are in the danger zone. So this is something that's very very important. Even if you're just spraying a tiny bit of lacquer or primer or spray paint um, using strippers, it doesn't matter. This stuff lingers and because it's clear you don't really think about it, you don't see it, but there's something that's going to astonish you coming up shortly <laughs> about that. This is the drawer that had the patch. I apologize for some reason I didn't record actually putting the piece of wood in, but you can see there's a slight color variation there. And that is because I had to draw on the lines of the grain, but you'll see that smooth out when I go to put on some toner a little bit later. So what the toner is going to do is it's going to just slightly tint the areas that are lighter and that's what I'm using here. I'm opting to use the color natural cherry. I didn't want to use mahogany because it's so dark and so red. So the cherry is just going to give that kind of reddish tint without being too dark. And here I am putting on the first of several coats of lacquer on the top of this. This is a ratcheting screwdriver and this is going to make it really easy to get into areas like this where you can't fit a full length screwdriver. These things are great. So you remember that shot of me pointing to that? Look at the color of the filter. This is what it looks like after doing this piece. I didn't think this would be this effective with lacquer, to be honest. I am both grossed out and blown away at how well this has pulled this stuff out of the air. 
Now, when I mentioned about clear lacquer, most people not thinking about it, it's because you can't see it. If I only sprayed clear lacquer, the filter would still look white and I would be none the wiser, but because I can see the color, it really hits home about how dangerous this stuff is. This particular one has two speeds and an ionizer and I am not sponsored by this company. I went and bought this with my own money <laughs> uh, mid-February and I picked this specific one because it had a very high airflow rate. These aren't cheap, but these are invaluable addition to your workroom. Like I can't stress enough how important it is to breathe. I almost didn't buy one of these because I didn't think it would be as effective as it was. So I am super impressed. Now looking at my cartridge here on my respirator, same thing, you can see the color difference. And I was due for a change on these anyway, but I was just grossed out after seeing this. So I decided to change my cartridges now. Buying a respirator like this, it's not a one and done thing. You have to buy replacement cartridges and do it regularly because the more clogged up these get, the less effective they are. So protect your lungs, guys. You hear all of us YouTubers talk about safety and all of us can be a little slack sometimes, but the older I get, the more important I realize my health is. Now, how do I clean up after something like this where I don't have a spray booth? Basically, what I do is I wipe off every surface, I vacuum the floor, and then I mop. It takes a lot of time, it's a pain in the butt, and honestly, I wish I had either had a spray booth or never had to use lacquer anyway. And these precious little souls are never allowed out here unless it's perfectly clean. To say this piece has come a long way is an understatement. I couldn't be happy with how this turned out. This is a very well made piece, but it obviously needed some attention and hoping that you enjoyed following along while I refinish this piece. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share all that good stuff. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Enjoy the reveal.